in your life. Praise God. Praise God. I read about a, pre a preacher uh, who was uh, um, who was having some uh, uh, teeth pro tooth problem, and uh, he decided to replace his teeth with uh, dentures. And uh, he was in his final stages of getting his dentures ready. So uh, on the first Sunday of this time, he, he, he preached, and he, he only preached for 10 minutes. But the next Sunday, he preached for 20 minutes. On the third Sunday, he preached for one hour and 20 minutes. The congregation was confused. Why would the preacher take uh, so little time one Sunday and take so much time the third Sunday. So they were curious. They wanted to know. So they came to him, preacher, what happened? He said, you know, the first Sunday my gums were so hurting I couldn't, I couldn't speak much. On the second Sunday, my dentures were hurting. So I couldn't speak, uh, uh, speak much. But on the third Sunday, I accidentally grabbed my wife's dentures I couldn't just stop speaking. <laughs> so be careful. Be careful. Make sure you get your own dentures, all right? Praise God. Praise God. I want to talk to you about um, the, the second coming of, uh, of Jesus. Praise God. You know, I thought I changed the title on this slide, but I don't know what happened. But it's good. It's good. That's where I started, but later on I changed it. But what I started stays with it, I guess. Uh, I, what I wanted to say was uh, the second coming of Christ. But it is, it is the same, same meaning. Um, I was thinking about what to share with you this morning, and uh, especially in the light of communion that we have. Uh, the passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 uh, talks about the apostle reminding the Corinthian believers to, to come together to break bread and to drink from the cup, uh, to proclaim the Lord's death until, until he come, until he comes. So uh, I, th I, I felt like there is a need to talk about the second coming of Christ because often we live in a busy life and our mind is not really focused on eternal uh, heavenly thing unless we are pulled in that direction. Uh, seems like uh, our full force is in the things of the world, our job, our family, our health, our well-being, and, and often... We, we, we forget uh, the more important uh, things in life, that is uh, eternity. Uh, the other day, uh, Evie was speaking about uh, living life with an eternal uh, perspective. So, so we are not made to live here on the earth. As believers, we are made for heaven. And uh, life on earth is temporal. Life in heaven is eternal. So we ought to conduct our life with a heavenly perspective. Uh, that we are citizens of uh, heaven. We are citizens of heaven. So, But I know I, I live in the world just like uh, 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 as you do, and I often need to be pulled back in and brought back into the right path of thinking. So it is good once in a while we, are hi uh, we highlight uh, the coming of Jesus. Uh, some people may not believe it. Uh, in fact, uh, the Apostle Peter, in his time, this was back in the first century. Um, it was just uh, a, a few years after all the, um, uh, the things about Christ and his death and his burial and resurrection and the powerful ministry of the apostles were going on. And even, even toward the um, end of that century, people began to wonder and say, where? Where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise of his coming? We, we've been hearing about it for some time, but he hasn't come. 
So people were beginning to wonder about it and talk about it. And uh, they even raised questions. And the Apostle Peter addressed that situation. And, uh, uh, and, and he said, uh, uh, God is not slack concerning his promise. Uh, he will come. He will come. But we do not know the time. We know that he will come. So it is important for us to know and to be prepared uh, for his coming. We don't want to be ashamed or we don't want to be taken by surprise um, at the coming of the Lord. Uh, we, since we don't know when he is going to come, it is good for us to be ready all the time. All the time. The Bible does not tell us to get ready, but the Bible tells us to watch. Amen? Watch. Be ready. We are to be ready. We are not to be get, you know, we are not to get ready when he comes. We are to be ready. We are to be ready as we live our life. So I want to, I want you to think about the coming of Christ today in the light of the communion we have. This tells us he came once. This tells us Jesus came uh, some 2,000 plus years ago for us. He died on the cross. He gave his life. Uh, he was buried and he rose again and he went back to heaven we, where he came from, uh, leaving us a promise that he will come again. Praise God. So we, we do not feel as orphans. Never. We are God's children. We have somebody who is thinking about us and he is going to come for us. For us, for us, often as you eat this bread and eat, drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Can you say together, till he comes? Till he comes. Till he comes. So, so we have the promise of God. We have the assurance that he will come. He will come. And, and I want you to think about that. In the busyness of life, do not forget that, that Jesus might come on that day. On that day, I remember reading about a preacher who would, uh, um, when he goes to his bed for, uh, to sleep, and he will open the window and look out into the sky and say, Tonight, Lord. Tonight, Lord. And then, we, uh, then, then he wakes up in the morning. He looks out the, the, the morning sky and say, Today, Lord. Today, Lord. So he lived uh, every day of his life in the light of his coming. In the light of his coming. And that is the way we ought to live. Is it, is it today, Lord? Is it tomorrow? Is it, is it tonight? Whatever the time is, I need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. In John 14, verses 2 and 3, we read, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Say that together. I will come again. Amen. I will come again. That's a promise of God. Throughout the Old Testament, the prophets said that Jesus will come uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a lamb to give his life for us. And he did. The prophecies were fulfilled. Now here Jesus is saying, I will come again. I will come again. So the Lord is coming again, and we need to be ready for his coming. It is important we think about heaven. Praise God. So, so what does it mean? What does, it, uh, what does the coming of Christ mean to you and to me? How does it affect us? Or should it affect us at all? I think the answer to that question is it should. It should affect us big time. Because we are expecting his coming. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. I want to present you, leave you with the, uh, two or three thoughts uh, very quickly. And, um, you know, when we think about the second coming of Jesus Christ, um, the, the, the Apostle Paul, writing to Titus, uh, he said that it is the blessed hope of the Christian. It's a blessed hope. You know, Christians are of all the people in the world uh, the most hopeful people. Amen? Or at least they should be. <laughs> you know, of all the people in the world, we should be the most hopeful. Amen? Praise God. And uh, um, 
One pastor, Pastor Criswell, who was a pastor of the Dallas uh, First Baptist Church, a huge, huge church, uh, he talked about his grandson asking about, uh, about what is an optimist because he always talked about Christians should be optimist. Think, think, look at, you know, uh, don't, don't say the, the glass is half empty. Say the glass is half full. Amen. So we should be the most hopeful people in the world. We ought to be sharing, giving out hope to other people who seem to be hopeless all around us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> you know, there is a lot of hopeless people in this world. And, and some of them may be sitting next to you in a cubicle next to you. They're struggling. Uh, that, you know, being hopeful doesn't mean we have no problem. You know, we have problems, but praise God, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful because, because I have a living Savior. And, and, and he can handle every situation, any situation in life. Let me say it again. Christians, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, need to be the most hopeful people in the world. Now, now resolve it today that you will be a hopeful person. Now, some people, when they talk, everything that comes up their mouth is negative. What a discouraging thing, Right? What a discouraging thing. Yeah, it won't happen, you know. I won't get a job. I, don't say that. Always be hopeful about things. So the Apostle Paul talks about the coming of Christ as a blessed hope for the believer. This should bless us, in other words. This should encourage us and build us up because you would say, my Jesus is coming again. My Lord is coming again. And I'm waiting uh, for his coming Praise God. Praise God. So what does the Bible say? For the grace of God that uh, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. To appear to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, uh, and godly in the present age. We are to live in this world like this. Uh, here is how we are to live in this present age. Um, and then verse number 13 says, Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of, of our great God and Savior. Amen. I want you to see the coming of our Lord as a blessed hope. It's a, it's a hope that should bless you. It is a hope that is blessed. And we ought to be looking forward to that time the Lord will come. Praise God. So what is it to you today? Is it a blessed hope or is it something dreadful? Oh, I don't want him to come. Now I have to, I have to, I have to get married. I have to have some children. I have to get a job. I have to have a house. Lord Jesus, please don't come now. Please wait for a little more years. If we have a good understanding of heaven, we will say goodbye to all these things. Praise God. We, we want to cling on to the things of the world because we have a poor understanding of heaven. Praise God. I read about a couple of old ladies who were uh, regularly eating oatmeal all the time because they didn't want to have any cholesterol. They didn't, they, they didn't want to die, you know, before their time uh, by their eating habits. So, so they kept eating all this healthy food and eventually they died. Everybody dies, right? <laughs> Eventually they died and they went to heaven and, and they looked around and they once said to one another, Oh, Martha, Martha, if we had known this place was this wonderful, why did we waste our life eating, eating oatmeal? We, we want to cling on to this world because of our poor understanding of heaven. Praise God. You know what the Apostle Paul said? I would rather be with Christ. I would rather be with Christ. Praise God. So don't, don't go and re, uh, uh, quit your job after the sermon today. <laughs> Praise God. You need to continue, but keep your eyes, uh, uh, eyes up and, and, and look toward heaven. Praise God. So it is a blessed hope for us. Number two, uh, it has a purifying effect in the, in the believer. 
when we think about heaven, when we, when we think about Jesus Christ our Lord and his coming to receive us, it has a purifying effect in our life. It's an influence upon our life. Beloved, in, in 1 John chapter 3, verses 3, uh, 2 and 3, that should be 2 and 3, it says, Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what, she, what we shall be, but we know, we know, say that, we know. Do you know? We know. Yes, I know. What is that? But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. Praise God. Amen. You look at your prospect. You look at your future. It won't be this sickly body. This won't be this bald head. We will be like him. Praise God. We will be like Christ when he comes and when we meet him. Praise God. We shall be, I mean, that is something to shout about. I'm going to be like the Lord. Praise God. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk with him. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to see all the glories of heaven. And I'm going to reign with him. Praise God. You have a great, great thing waiting for you. Praise God. So what happens here? We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is. And everyone, this is the key, and everyone who has this hope of seeing him, this hope of being like him, everyone who has this hope in him, what does, what does he do? He purifies himself. Who is supposed to purify who? I'm supposed to purify myself in the word of God, with the blood of Jesus, praying and asking God for forgiveness in my life because the Bible tells me, but he, the blood of his son cleanses us from all sins. But when I have an understanding of the holiness of Christ, holiness of God, and the place where I'm going to, it is an influencing thing in my life to keep myself pure. To keep you know, there are young people here today. I ask you today, keep yourself pure because Jesus is coming. Don't get into the things of this world. There are so many things drawing you. But keep yourself pure because Jesus Christ is coming soon. Praise God. So, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is. Our standard is pretty high. So we need to strive. We need to get sanctified. Praise God. You know, salvation has three phases. I am saved from my sin. I am forgiven. But the second stage is I am being saved. That means I am being sanctified. I am being cleansed as I live through this world, walk through this world. I am being saved. And the third stage is I shall be saved. Praise God. Then I will be away from this sinful world, away from the influence of sin. I will be saved. Praise God. So everyone who has hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. People who live in sin cannot expect or cannot think about the coming of Christ. It is a dreadful thing to them because they are in sin. So if you look for the, if you are a saved person, you need to look for the Lord. And if you are looking for the Lord, praise God, you have to purify yourself. Praise God. Because it is so easy in this world to be contaminated. Amen? So easy in this world. And, and the sin will present itself so, so often before us. But we need, to, we need to say, I'm a child of God. I just cannot do that. I have to be different. Your friends may hate you. Your company may fire you. I heard someone say the other day that, that they were fired because they would not do something unethical in the company. But you have to stand. You have to say, I am a child of God. I am looking for my Savior to come. Praise God. Praise God. So, number two is the coming of the Lord, the, the thought of coming of the Lord uh, has, a, has a positive, cleansing, purifying influence on the believer. Number three, number three, this hope anticipates an eternal inheritance. 
an eternal inheritance. Praise God. Everybody is looking for inheritance, aren't they? There are so much uh, fighting and, and quarrels uh, concerning inheritance. I want my peace. I won't let it go. I have to have it. I am willing to do anything for it. But praise God, if you are a child of God, you don't have to worry about any inheritance here. You have an inheritance in heaven. Praise God. How do we know that? In, uh, uh, in, 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 in First Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, we read, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse number 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, true, totally opposite to the inheritance we have on this earth. Every inheritance on this earth is uh, corruptible, it is defiled, and uh, it rushed away. But, but your inheritance and my inheritance that God has prepared for you in heaven is incorruptible, praise God, undefiled, and does not fade away. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, so change the focus and look to heaven. God, I have a, this, this tremendous inheritance waiting for you. I don't want to lose that because I went after went after the earthly, earthly things in this world. There is a Malayalam song, if you know Malayalam, an old song that is, Manne Pradi Manikyam Vedi Yigilanyan. Get it on Malayalam, get it on Amen. You know, Manne Pradi Manikyam Vedi Yigilanyan. Praise God. In other words, what the songwriter is saying, Praise God for a piece of for, for a for a piece of earth. I am not going to for, forsake my inheritance in heaven. Amen. So do not, like Esau, who sold his birthright for a piece of meal, do not praise God. Do not sell that precious thing you have awaiting for you in heaven. Keep holding on. Keep pressing on because you have an inheritance in heaven. Undefiled incorruptible, that does not fade away. Praise God. God loves us. Amen. God loves us. He, he has great things for us. Praise God. And he, so he's going to send his son, praise God, send his son uh, to, to help us uh, in these areas. Praise God. And, and number four, number four, the, the second coming of Christ is an encouragement to assemble together as a church. You know, this is an encouragement. You know, uh, those people who have a keen interest in the coming of the Lord, uh, they, they, know, they know that they need to be part of a church. They need to be part of a family because it is in the family of God we grow in Christ. We, in, we grow in Christ. Praise God. We grow in Christ. And, and in, in Hebrews, we read Hebrews, and let us consider one another, here it is, let us consider one another um, in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, as the, ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day of his coming approaching. So when you and I realize the Lord is coming soon, it is an encouragement for us to come together as a church, worshiping together, encouraging one another, exhorting one another, being, being in the house of God to glorify God. It is an encouragement. A churchgoer wrote a letter to the editor of a local newspaper and complained that it made no sense to go to church every Sunday. A man write to the newspaper. It makes no, uh, he's a churchgoer, by the way. He said that it makes no sense to go to church every Sunday. The letter reads this as follows. I have gone to church for 30 years now. 
In that time, I have heard something like 3,000 sermons. But for the life of me, I can remember a single one of them. So I think I'm wasting my time and the pastors are wasting their time. Any of you feel that way? <laughs> I've been going to church for 30 years, heard about 3,000 sermons, and I cannot remember anything. So I'm wasting my time. The preachers are waiting, wasting their time. So the, this created a lot of reply to his letter to the editor. This started a real controversy in, in the letters to the editor column. Much to the delight of the editor. The editor loved it. He said, community is interested. So many letters are coming. It went on for two, four weeks until someone wrote the following letter. I have been married for 30 years now. <laughs> I've been married for 30 years now. In that time, my wife has cooked some 32,000 meals. But for the life of me, I cannot recall the entire menu for a single one of those meals. But I do know this. They all nourished me and gave me the strength I needed to do my work. If my wife had not given me these meals, I would be physically dead today. Likewise, if I had not gone to church for nourishment, I would be spiritually dead today. And it is important to be part of a church, a growing, thriving church. And, and you can do a lot of good in a church. You can, you may think you are not doing anything at all, but when you present yourself into the house of God, you are doing something unknown to you. Unknown to you. I will tell you from my experience, I would rather see you here than away from here. So, so our presence in the house of God speaks of our commitment to God, speaks of our love for one another, speaks of our desire to grow in the Lord, speaks of our expectation that one day the Lord is going to come. It is important. But many people, as the Apostle Paul, even in his days, he said there are some people, it's not a big deal for them. Someone said God loved the church. And gave himself for the church. Who am I to take it lightly? It is important that we become part of a growing, thriving family of God's children. Number five, looking for is the mark of a believer. Every believer who loves the Lord, who is truly born again, it is in his gene, may I say, it is in his heart that he needs to be looking for the coming of the Lord. Because it is, it is his desire to see the Lord. What do we read in the scripture? When Paul was writing the Thessalonian church, he said, You turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Many people, you know, threw away their idols and uh, uh, things made, of, uh, made by men by their own hands and, and said, This is your God. So the Thessalonian believers were idol worshippers. And, and the Bible says you turn to God, the living God, from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for His Son from heaven. To wait for His Son from... We, we got saved so we can wait for the coming of the Lord. We look for Him. He will come soon. Praise God. Praise God. So what are the five points? Number one. Number one. It is a blessed hope. It's a blessed hope. It blesses you. It's a blessed hope. Number two. It has a purifying influence in your life. It purifies you. I remember about the story of a, of a, of a man walking into a, a kid's school room and uh, uh, he looked all the kids and with their with their desk, and he made a promise to promise to them. Now, when I come back, 
I will give a big prize to the student whose desk is clean and organized. You know the, how the kids are. They just throw things here and there, many of them. Some of them may not. But, but he made a promise to them, when I come back, the, the best organized desk, whoever sits there, I will give you a good price. So the kids asked him a question, but when are you going to come back? And he said, I can tell you that, but I will come back. I will look at your desk. And, and, and when he made that statement, one of the girls in that classroom who, who had a very disorderly behavior, his, he, her desk was the most disorganized desk in the whole classroom, he stood up and said, I will win that prize. And all her friends were surprised. You, look at your desk. You always have a messy desk. Always. And you think you are going to, you're going to win that prize? And that, yes, I'm going to win that prize. And they said, how are you going to do that? And they said, and she said, well, I will, I will clean my desk the first thing every week. The first thing every week. And the kid said, but you don't know when he's going to come. Well, in that case, I will clean my desk every day. Every day. And then the other kid said, well, you, you don't know when, which day he's going to come. And then she said, thought for a while, and she said, I will keep my desk clean all the time. That's the way you and I need to live. Amen? Uh, don't think about cleaning once a week. Many people think about they can do it all in one day. No, 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 no. Or, or don't think about doing it, you know, one day, uh, one day at a time. You got to be cleansed, ready every day. Keep that desk clean every day. So that when that man comes back, when he looks at it, he will see that your desk is clean and you will get a prize for it. Praise God. Praise God. So my friends, Jesus is coming soon. Maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, or maybe soon. Coming again, coming again. Oh, what a day that would be. Jesus is coming again. Can you clap your hand? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Coming again. He is coming again. 